Hello. I'm Renee Morales, Director of Operations at Voices for All, and I'm here to present Avoiding Bad Demos, the first in our summer series webinar um, campaign. Uh, tonight's present presenter is going to be Mike Elmore. Mike, say hello to everyone. Hold your applause. Hold your applause, everybody. <clears throat> <laughs> I, don't, I didn't hear anyone applauding. They must all I, be muted. They must all be muted. I think that's it. <laughs> hello, everybody. Thank you, well, Renee, for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so as you know, Mike, we have a summer series webinar schedule, and you're kicking it off with this um, very straightforward presentation on how to avoid bad demos. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I thought for the folks on the call who don't actually know who you are yet, uh, here's a few little tidbits about your life. Um, Did you get this from all, Wikipedia? Because you know that stuff's not always true. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, yeah. I know they actually, lie. Actually, everything on here, as as I as I as I glance through it, everything on here is false. No, I'm kidding. Actually, all <laughs> of this is, all of this is in fact accurate. <laughs> now, is it Venita or Venita? It's Venita, Venita, Oklahoma. Nor it's in northeast Oklahoma. It's about an hour away from Tulsa. <laughs> and some people may still be going. Okay, yeah, we still don't know where Tulsa is. Okay, Oklahoma City, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not far from Oklahoma. It's about two and a half hours from Oklahoma City. So 15 minutes one way, and you cross the Kansas state line. 15 minutes the other way, and you're in Missouri. So we, uh, or Missouri. I should know how to say that. So uh, we used to drive in high school. We used to drive. We used to go to the state line. We'd cross the state line about a mile so we could get 5 0 beer. Uh, in Kansas, right? As a, uh, in Kansas, yep. Um, yep. As, a, as opposed to our 3.2 percent alcohol, and um, should I be telling people this? Probably <laughs> that not. Was decades ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember 3.2, and they called them blue laws. Did they call them yes. blue laws? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. I come from Missouri, so I know all about you that. Know. All about that. <laughs> Benita, Oklahoma. That's where I started. Uh, um, that's where I started working in radio. I was. Um, uh, I was in high school still, and uh, I was a junior in high school. And I, uh, did you want me to go through this stuff, or am I, <laughs> am I jumping ahead? Oh, you're doing fine. I just wanted to give our audience an opportunity to get an idea of your background. So, feel free to share, or just let them sort of absorb your greatness through this slide. Well, you know, you can absorb most of it through the slide. But I did start. Um, it says 20 plus years in radio and voice acting, which is true. And I started there in uh, a little town called Miami, Oklahoma. I was born in Venita, actually, and then uh, lived there till I was about four. Then we moved to Miami, about 25 minutes up the pike, as we uh, say. And I started in high school working in radio there at a little country station. And uh, then I went to uh, the University of Oklahoma and worked at the college radio station there. Then I went to a radio station in Oklahoma City called Rock 100, The Cat, and uh, which is no longer there, and of course um, <laughs> then off to Dallas, Texas, then to Los Angeles, and now down to Miami, Florida, which is uh, South Florida, the area that I live in now. And I got out of doing voice, uh, out of doing live radio, because of all that moving that's involved. Many times when you work in live radio, the pay wasn't very good, and I um, decided, hey, these people around me, uh, these live radio people are dropping off like flies. What are they doing? And I found out a lot of them were doing voiceovers. So I started asking a lot of questions and got to getting a lot of answers about how do you do this. That's when I learned about the home recording studio wave hitting the voiceover industry. You can now record from home digitally. We didn't have to use ra uh, grease pencils and razor blades anymore. <laughs> Recording on reel to reel, so I ask a lot of these people questions like how they got in position to do that. How do you know who needs the voiceovers, and how do they know who you are? And um, after collecting um, a bunch of answers from them, I started putting my own little voiceover studio, if you will, together here in my home, and that's what I've been doing for about the last uh, about the last 12 years. Nothing, nothing but voiceovers. So, having you present on how to avoid bad demos is probably a really good fit for your experience. Well, you know, I've seen demos go through uh, many different evolutions. You know, when I first started doing this, our uh, uh, voiceover demos were, were recorded on cassettes, and we would label the cassettes and put them in a manila envelope and then go down to the post office with as many as I could afford to send out. 
and we would send those out and you know it's like pulling an arm on a slot machine many times nothing happens and every once in a while you uh, you hit a little jackpot here and there um, and then we graduated to CDs sending out CDs uh, and that cost a little more money because they were heavier in the jewel case and then um, all of a sudden here comes the internet I can't believe there was no internet when I first started doing this but all of a sudden here comes the internet and we're able to send mp3s for free so it's a much uh, easier industry to participate in for many more people due to uh, you know all these technological advancements and so forth and not only have demos um, evolved in terms of the the format that we use from cassettes to now mp3s but also the uh, the format or the architecture if you will the makeup of of a good voiceover demo has has changed drastically over the years from being nearly six minutes long three to six minutes long when i first started doing this uh... to down to about sixty seconds now so yeah um, i've definitely seen uh seen uh, the evolution of the voiceover demo and know exactly uh, what it should be like today. So um, whatever questions you want to throw at me, hopefully I'll be well versed in the demo area to ask them, answer them better. Well, fantastic. Um, I'll be opening up questions to the audience to be asked through chat a little bit later in our presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll also be reviewing some demos for you to evaluate and share what works and what doesn't, mostly what doesn't. Okay. Um, what I'm if a they're big all good? I have I have not heard these. What if they're all good? I guess that's good then, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, that's not going to be the case. <laughs> and I doubt it. <laughs> right. Yeah, so the best way to learn is through example, right? So how to avoid bad demos? Listen to some bad demos to hear what you're not supposed to do. Okay, so you've chosen some bad demos on purpose. Awesome, awesome. That'll make it, that'll make it easy for me. Okay, so one of the things that um, I just wanted to let you spend some time talking about are the real obvious things for avoiding bad bad demos. So That's right now in the yeah, so right now in the presentation I'm sharing that um, you know things like background noise, knowing your noise floor, mouth noises, pacing. And it's snakes, no snakes. snakes. I'm tired of yes. these snakes in these demos. Yes, exactly. So uh, <laughs> would you like to speak a little bit about these factors and how they contribute to bad demos and how to stop yes. them? Yes, yes, I would. So let me just go right down the line here. Background noise uh, is a no-no. There's no reason in today's digital voiceover industry um, to have any background noise. Now, we don't want to have to filter noise out uh, you know, using effects and things like that with our recording software, uh, which is possible very possible to take out you know slight noise but it's better to just get it right at the core it's better to to have a room that you're recording in that is treated properly um, y y you know you don't want to hear uh, ceiling fans running you don't want to hear air conditioning units outside the window um, now we're not trying to soundproof our areas that we record and that costs you know, thousands of dollars to do that we're just trying to treat it so that um, we don't have um, a whole lot of, uh, if any, background noise, um, air conditioning vents running. Now, if we did have some background noise going, such as a fan that's constantly running on a computer or an air conditioning, a, a, a central heat and air vent, um, that's going to create a floor, what's called a noise floor. And we want to know... Um, you know how high the noise floor is so you can just uh, you know there's a few different ways to do it but basically you just uh, record the room you hit record and you sit there and keep your mouth shut and um, and don't move and uh, then you can kind of uh, see w what your noise floor is what the percentage of the sound is your noise floor and there's an acceptable noise floor level and so forth but uh, I could get way too technical on that so you want to make sure your noise floor is almost zero so when you're recording when you're not talking really the line should look like it should be razor sharp the line going across when you're not talking shouldn't be fuzzy and that may not mean anything to people that haven't used recording software but it's like a heart monitor so when you record um, you have um, a wave file when you're talking and when you're not talking you have just a straight line and if it's fuzzy that means there's something going on in the background there's some kind of background noise uh, mouth noises uh, snap crackle and pop whenever you're nervous and for other various reasons you might have uh, a little bit of a mouth noise issue kind of day and uh, that's just the uh, you know the tongue snapping off the roof of the mouth and um, all different kinds of things like that could cause uh, 
could cause mouth noise. And these microphones are very uh, powerful and very sensitive these days. And um, it just doesn't sound good. You know, it's basically some, you know, a sound like that. Um, there are, uh, I don't know if cure is a good word, but there are uh, fixes for that. Um, the, my favorite and the one that seems to work best for me is just a, having a green apple handy. And I take uh, three or four bites of a green apple. The pectin, all apples have pectin from what I understand, but green apples uh, have more pectin. And it works as a really good mouth lubricant. And I chase it with a big mouthful of room temperature water. And that usually gets me uh, set for about five to ten minutes without any mouth noise. Uh, and staying hydrated also helps, but <clears throat> that's what a lot of people say. But I drink about eight glasses of water a day, and I still have mouth noise. I'm still eating apples all the time. Um, and pacing. Pacing is very important. Um, you don't want the listener getting in the middle of the second clip and w starting to wonder if they have enough milk to make it through the week, you know, or balancing their checkbook in their <laughs> head when they should be listening to your demo. And that's exactly what can happen, either that or they might uh, just hit the stop button and stop listening if the click, uh, clips rather are too long. So there's a definite uh, kind of a there, there are a few sciences to creating voiceover demos because a lot of polls and studies have been done with frequent demo listeners. What turns you on when you listen to a demo? What turns you off? Um, and long clips are the devil. So uh, we want to have short clips. On a co I'm talking about a commercial demo now. Uh, we want to have short clips. Um, and really how long those are, usually people ask that question. Uh, how long should the clips be? Well, that's going to depend on all the other clips surrounding it. It's going to depend on the voice talent. It's going to depend on their strengths. Um, you know, uh, it's it's hard to tell. It's you really don't decide that how long the clips are going to be until you've recorded the demo session, and you're listening to the clips and so forth. Uh, but there are a few different formulas that that are proven successful these days. And then S's, um, I guess <clears throat> I'm not sure. I guess we're talking about sibilants here. Yes, um, we are. Okay, um, sibilance is hissy S's. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. I'm not a very sibilant person, but uh, many people are. And it's just a very high-frequency, harsh, abrasive hissing sound on T's and S's and things like that. Um, things can be done in terms of proximity effect to the microphone to lessen that. Um, about angling your pop filter a little bit. Uh, pop filter is the little round thing that goes between your mouth and the microphone. Angling that sometimes will help. Um, but also in recording software these days, and the one, the one that I use, Pro Tools, uh, which is a great program, has um, what's called a de -esser in there. And basically what it is is you record with all the hissy S's, and then you just open the de -esser, and as you're listening to the file and all the S's are shredding your eardrums, you start uh, bringing the intensity of the de -esser up, and it just starts to shave the high frequency off of, uh, off of the recording a little bit. And it's something that a good engineer with a good ear uh, can, can set, and, and it's going to be a different setting for, for each person, and maybe even each recording, depending on how close or far from the mic they are. Uh, well, now, Mike, thanks for going uh, through these and explaining what they mean. Um, in truth, I could have come up with another 25 different <laughs> examples of what creates a bad demo. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, show some basic ones. Um, you'll notice that the recurring theme here is noise. I mean, one of the first ways to avoid bad demos is to be aware of the noise level around you. So um, I appreciate you, just, you explaining this. Yeah, now, that's true. As I mentioned um, earlier, um, one of the things that I think helps people to learn best is to learn from examples. So I have some demo examples for you, and I'm going to play them one at a time. And you can listen to them, and you provide your evaluation of how they sound. Okay, yeah, and you're sure they're all bad. Oh, I'm pretty sure they're all bad. <laughs> how could you tell? <laughs> I will listen and see if I can figure out what you were thinking when you labeled these people with bad demos. Now, we're not going to mention any names, right? No, we're not mentioning any names. <laughs> okay. um, I, I will share this. I will share that um, every one of these demos came from a site that promotes 
voiceover artists getting jobs. <laughs> Every I also won't people. mention the site. Okay, but you say, you're saying they all came from the same site. The, uh, all but one. All but one. <laughs> You know what, oh. and that actually, before you play these, <clears throat> that actually uh, le uh, segues me in um, just to uh, spend about 10 seconds here saying um, there's a lot of mediocrity in the voiceover industry. If you haven't noticed already, just uh, keep your ear to the speakers when you hear voiceovers and uh, tune in instead of tuning out. And you'll notice that there is a fair amount of mediocrity. And this just uh, speaks uh, to volumes for, to that because I believe you're saying this is a site that promotes voiceover talent and they expect people to come to this site and say hey your voiceover talent sounds great I want to pay money for these people and you're saying the demos are no good so I'm very interested to hear these okay let's get started with number one um, I'll play and when you're ready to have me stop or whatever you just you just tell me when okay oh hold on hold on hold on I'm gonna, I'm, I want to get my uh, stopwatch here because one of the big issues is a lot of demos today if they're not produced professionally they don't realize that they shouldn't go on and on and on and on and on. So I'll probably let these play all the way through and just see um, timing-wise if we're even in the ballpark. Okay. All right. Here comes demo number one. All right. Didn't get that perfect gift for Christmas? Did you get that perfect gift card and can't wait to spend it? Target has the latest and greatest in electronics and toys, bundles and games that the whole family can enjoy. Dream big. Save bigger. Target. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it. Well, where do I even start? All right. Well, a couple of things here with this. First of all, um, that's not a proper voiceover demo. Um, there was only one clip. It was, it was a 15-second commercial that he did. So that is technically a demo. It's a demonstration of what he sounds like reading a script. But an effective demo should should be um, uh, kind of. I, I like to con confer, uh, to uh, what's the word I'm looking for to compare it to a buffet. You know, when we um, are uh, going to a food buffet, we want to see a lot of food. We want to see a lot of variety. It says right here, number one, lack of variety. Um, if I'm looking for someone to do a voiceover uh, for a commercial, and this guy sends me this demo, what if that's not the style I'm looking for, you know? So his chances, he wasted his time sending me this demo. He should have a smorgasbord. Do we, is that, do we still use that word anymore? We still we do. Should, he should have a smorgasbord, uh, lots of texture, lots of tempo changes, lots of different variety in the demo. So let me just start at the beginning. First of all, it was just one clip, so it's not a proper demo if you're trying to get a voiceover job. Second of all, there was no music underneath it. There was no production music. Um, and you really need that to give the ear something to grab onto and help the words move along. Um, I can, you know, I'm not hearing it through the best in, of conditions here over the internet, but um, it sounded to me like the, the, the quality of his microphone or maybe his, you know, maybe his distance from the microphone w wasn't, wasn't quite as good as it could be. And uh, the last thing, and, and since we're not mentioning names, his technique was, was, was in non-existent. Uh, he was just kind of talking through the thing and go na 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 na. So there was no technique there. There really wasn't um, anything for the listener's ear to to grab onto. So lack of technique. It was just one clip. It was only 15 seconds. There was no music, and I think his uh, proximity to the microphone was probably uh, probably not what it should have been. Okay. Uh, thank you for that evaluation. We're going to go to number two, which will, as you see, have off other issues with technique. So, ready? Yes, ready to go. What if you could turn your money into more money for the things you buy every day? Being an American means every day is Independence Day. Get out, get in, and get more. Only at Fremont Motors. Hey, with free car washes for life, I'm going back. I'm going back a lot. Not us. Oh, no. <laughs> We're cut from a different cloth. From a land of tradition and honor. To a world of violence and greed. Not like that. Like a diverse voice. No, oh, right. Sorry. How's this? Imagine a world where every video game addict suddenly stopped playing their games. We hate it when that happens. But we know what to do when it does. Our grill is open all day long. Serving quality food at a good price. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Well, better. 
better than the first one. <clears throat> um, um, uh, this guy has uh, has tech. He has some some technique training, uh, but it was it wasn't quite up to par. And the the whole inner world, you know that that didn't need to be on there because it didn't sound. It sounded like him doing. And maybe that's what he meant. I don't know. Because then we had the production guy on the talkback mic saying not the inner world thing. Blah blah blah. So I thought everything sounded good, but I would have left that off of there. And here's the problem with this demo. Um, there was once again. Where's the music? I mean, does this website you found require that people have no music in their in their demo? There was no music, and I found it distracting because music will help the listener determine when when one clip ends and another one begins. And you know, that's really. Oh, so sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I. That's really um, kind of kismet that you mentioned that because I just had a question come in asking. Is that what you're supposed to do? Have one clip end on top of another? That's how the question was asked. I think I know what they mean. I think it seemed like the clips overlapped. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't notice that, but but it, it, they very well could have. No, you, I mean you don't want to have one word. Uh, you know, you don't want to have the last word of one clip uh, fading into and on top of uh, uh, the first word of the next clip. If that's what was happening, and if that's what they're asking. Uh, you know, to me, a demo just should be like a puzzle. Piece, 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 piece. They don't necessarily need to overlap. Definitely the words shouldn't overlap. Now, the music might overlap a little bit if sure. you've got music trailing out. But, uh, but I mean, you know, there was no music in this one. So, again, it made it hard to tell where the transition from one clip to another clip, uh, you know, where one ended and one, one began. And, and that could have been easily fixed by music. Now, I like the timing on this. He was at 42 seconds. It seemed longer, though. So liking the timing and, and liking how they arrived there are two different things because I, I hit the, the stopwatch and I wasn't watching it. And I, I felt like, and after decades of doing this, I'm pretty good at 30 seconds and 60 seconds in my, in my, uh, the clock in my head. But I thought we were at about 60 and I looked down and we're only at 42. So what that probably means is some of the clips were maybe just a little too long uh, or maybe some of the clips were, were similar. I don't really know, to be honest with you, but uh, I think that if that demo was retooled and, and production music was added and we dropped the inner world and put something else in there, I, I think that has potential. I think the guy uh, definitely has, uh, has potential. He's got some, some good technique there, but the technique used on produ producing the demo, uh, way off. Okay. Um, here's number three. Women are funny about food. They have funny food issues, funny food regrets, funny food confessions. It's almost as if they're apologizing for indulging. It's a funny thing about a Porsche. There's the moment you know you want one, the moment you first own one, and for the truly afflicted, there's the decade or two in between. To be in business is to communicate. Whether you work with concepts and ideas or wood and steel, Two guys are a building full. Fast, efficient communication is key. Short communications is a key. Your meat shouldn't have jet lag. Food from farms, not factories. Over one million chemicals, not served. Half a world away, they get ready to go on patrol. The Afghan sky is still dark as they load into their armored vehicles. While the men and women of the US military protect us, who protects them when the unexpected happens? Last year, we helped 93,000 people get back on their feet by preparing... Keep it rolling, food. Renee, but we're at one minute already. Over 82,000 yep. food packages yep. to Hungary and by offering more than 3,700 units of... All across America, weekend warriors are gearing up and competing in a new breed of alternative racing, from school buses to Siamese cars to lawnmowers. And there it ends. And there it is. Okay, so about a minute 25, really no reason for it to have gone over a minute because what happened in that last, you know, roughly 25, maybe, maybe 20, 25 seconds was, um, were clips that we had already heard that style. You know, we, right. we had already heard that in the demo. There was just no reason uh, to, uh, to, to have those in there. And I just noticed <laughs> uh, that uh, here on the screen, these actually... Uh, uh, are the answers to what you thought made them a bad demo. I didn't realize that until just now. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't really explain I, that too much. I've got a cheat sheet right in front of me. I could just you have be a cheat sheet. Kick, you know, I could be, have my feet kicked up on the desk and not even paying attention here and just reading the notes here because uh, very good ear that you have because everything on here so far, um, uh, yeah, too similar. Yeah, the clips were, were too similar there at the end, fading. Uh, there were a couple of clips in there that faded out. I, I, I don't like that. You know, I mean, that, that's a personal preference thing, really. But I, I don't like the, uh, the, the idea of, of a clip fading, fading out. Um, I had a couple of notes. Let me see. What else did I put on here? Oh, the, two, the opening clip I didn't really like. I think that could be derogatory towards females. Um, and it could very well be a female that's listening to the demo. Well, you know, you know I, I just have to interject here being a woman. I didn't understand it at all. He's talking about women are funny about food, and then it changes to a Porsche commercial. Yeah. I, just, yeah, I, didn't, really, I didn't understand it either. Um, um, if you're going to say anybody's funny about anything, it should be a man, though. Men are funny about the way they don't ask for directions. You yeah, know, especially if you are like a man. That. Yeah. You, 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 yeah, you, you've got, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And even a female could say that and pull it off. And the guy would be like, oh, yeah, I guess we are. But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> that was I'm actually. My, I might be digging a hole for myself. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that was one of the reasons, you know, um, why this particular demo was selected. I mean, you know, there were some things that were very positive about it. We got music for a change, and he does change the music from clip Absolutely. to clip, like you mentioned. Um, I, thought, I, thought that the, I thought that some of them had. Uh, a couple of the clips I didn't really like the music, but but most of them I did. I thought uh, there was one in there that was just sound effects, and that's good. You know, you don't want to have just a bunch of clips with with music underneath them. It's a good idea to maybe have a dry one in there just to kind of uh, you know change the flow and uh, and create variety. Um, maybe one with the sound effects of a car starting, and you know, does your car do this? Um, so I I thought there was I thought there was decent variety in there, but too many fades. And the o the two opening clips um, talked about funny or something. You know what's funny? People are women are funny about this. And then the next clip was something. You know what's funny? Enough with the funny. And then again, this is just a personal preference. But I have been, you know, producing demos uh, uh, for years that people um, book gigs with all the time, including myself. And that's something that I wouldn't do. I, I wouldn't want to hear. I wouldn't want two dog food commercials back to back. And I don't want two commercials talking about what's funny back to back either. So right. And, and and you know, I think this brings up the point that it's not just technique. It's not just pacing. It's not just making sure that you have you know a, a solid music bed that works with what you're saying. It's also the selection of what you're going to do for a demo. Yeah, that's a very big deal because you know people have to figure out what their um. Uh, you know wh wh where their strong suits are, so um, that's something that that most people don't know. You know, a lot of guys with deep voices think that their strong suit is going to be movie trailers. Um, you know, and you know, coming this December in a word that that whole thing because that's what they do and that's what everybody says. Hey, man, you should do. Uh, you should be on the radio. You should do voiceovers. And then, you know, uh, they come to me and they do that. And I tell them, well, you know, you sound, um, you, you sound forced. <clears throat> you don't sound natural. Not saying you could never do it, but that's definitely not a strong suit right now. So you have to figure out through, uh, through, uh, through training, basically, and, and working with someone that has seasoned ears that, that will tell you honestly, and that's the important part, tell you honestly, when when you when you don't sound good and when you do sound good and there are a lot of people out there unfortunately that just to kind of keep the peace they'll sign people up to work with them under their tutelage they'll tell them oh that sounds great that sounds great let's keep going oh, maybe a little faster but but they don't get down and dirty you know with them and 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 that's really what you need because you don't know what your strong suits are you don't you really don't know people you just don't know unless you work in the voiceover industry uh, right. Unless you know what the current trends are, and I always tell uh, you know my students when I work with them, I always say, look, there are probably going to be moments of discomfort when we're training. Um, there are going to be moments when you're out of your comfort zone, when you're reading scripts, when I've created a, um, a a virtual obstacle course by telling you to mark this script up, and you've got 30 different directions in there, and a 30 in a 60 second script, you got to go up, you got to go down to the side, you got to you know you've got a wig, you've got a wag, um, and uh, and there are going to be moments when you're going to get frustrated, you're going to think, oh, I'm not, uh, I don't have what it takes to do this. 
But I tell people, you know, if you are ever learning something new and there aren't moments of discomfort, then you're probably not really learning anything because that's really when the good stuff happens. It's when you start um, feeling uncomfortable. That means you're learning something new. And uh, I just had a student. I just had a student today. Uh, I probably shouldn't give his name, but um, he uh, said, "You know, this is our was our fourth session working together." He said, "You know what? Everything you said to me over the last three sessions just now popped in my head." He said, "I I I'm, I get it. I get what we're what we're doing here." He said, "I don't think I'm doing it." I said, "Well, you're not. <laughs> you're not." And that's and that's what you got to tell people. But but getting it, you first of all, you have to get it before you can get it. So um, by the end of the session, he was uh, he had improved 250 percent, and he sent me an email tonight, and he's he's on fire. He said, I, "I'm finally seeing seeing the light," and it's a lot of fun. I put that up on my Facebook page. I said, "You know, the the moment when a student finally gets it, when they get it mentally and then physically and audibly start getting it, that's a priceless moment." And I got to experience that today, and that's a that's a huge reason why I uh, why I've been you know coaching for so long and, and enjoy it. Uh, for so much, uh, for so much, <laughs> why for I enjoy so much. it so much, and uh, you know why I why I messed up on that sentence there is because I'm trying to think why in the heck am I even saying this? I, I probably got off on some tangent, and I apologize. For you that. know, it's Maybe so it's hard to stop you though, because you're just you're, you're you're fascinating to listen to, Mike. So <laughs> I like to just let you go, but to rein you back in, I um I am going to go to the next demo. Okay. And what I might do is I might. Um, eliminate a couple of the demos further along in the list, just so we have enough time for our audience to ask some questions. So, sure. okay. a couple more demos, and then I think we'll move on. Okay. Okay. Demo number four. My child has quite an imagination. His parents say that someday he'll be doing great things. Right now, he's already an architect, a designer, an engineer. I think he's a creative genius. And thanks to Legos, the creative building toy, there's just no limit to what he can do. Legos, the creative diversion that helps develop a child's potential. Bye. Okay. 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 Now, again, we go back to some of the some of the uh, issues from before with, with no music. That could have really been spiced up uh, with some music, uh, maybe a couple of music beds. I'm I'm a big fan of. Starting with one music bed and then tra and then s either smash cutting or transitioning into another music bed um, of the same style, but just to kind of keep things colorful. Um, so I think that could have had some music in it. Now, can you play that again? I, I mean, I just want to hear the first part of that because I think I heard something in there. Um, I may not have heard it correctly, but I want to see. It may have been a misread on the script. Okay, sure. My child has quite an imagination. His parents say that someday he'll be doing great things. Okay, right now yeah, he's already it. an art. So what I heard there was, um, my child is such a fledgling artist. His parents say he'll be doing great things. I'm wondering if that was maybe a misread on the script um, because we go from talking in first person. My child is so great. His parents to talking in second person. Um, you're you're very good. You're very very good, Mike. The the <laughs> the mistake was that the word was not parents. It was teachers. Teachers. That would have made more sense. Yeah. Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of a misread on the on the uh, on the script there. Other than that, you know, and the fact that it's only one uh, it's only one uh, one clip, whereas we could fill up another fifty seconds of uh, of uh, of space there probably. Well, the interesting thing about this clip, which I um, did not share because your time is precious as our audience members' time, um, is that the clip repeats itself two more times after that. So you mean... It's the same clip. The exact same <laughs> clip or, or a different read? Exact of? same clip. Oh, so, it's, so it does fill about 60 seconds. <laughs> That's correct. So it is longer, but we're listening to the thing. You know what that reminds me of, Renee? I played in a band in junior high, and we only knew one song, and it was Hit Me... Or no, it was... Uh, uh, we knew two songs. Hit Me With Your Best Shot, Pat Benatar, and We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's. And we played at uh, an, uh, 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 an assembly. And uh, we played Hit Me With Your Best Shot, and we played uh, We Got the Beat. And everybody... Uh, uh, started cheering and wanted us to play more, and the principal was over on the side saying, keep going. So we had to play We Got the Beat again. <laughs> so we played the same song twice, 
And uh, here I am decades later, and I still get slack about that from people. So, Or not slack, <laughs> but flack about that from people. So I think that maybe hearing that clip once was, was okay, but hearing it three times in a row, I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> right. Um, and then, you know, the reason why I added this to the list is because of the controversy over the pronunciation of L-E-G-O-S. Yeah, I would say Legos. I, I believe it's Legos, but I, I don't know that for sure. I, I, be I believe there it was pronounced Legos, Lay, L-A-Y-G-O-S. Yes, it's interesting. I, I, I was going to say something... I was going to say something about that, but I, I don't know for sure. I, I would think it that it would be Legos. Le, you, know, you remember the old commercial, Lego, my ego? Right. Not that that had anything to do with Legos. But, right. Um, but that's the way it was spelled, you know, L-E-G-G-O, E-G-G-O, ego, ego, Lego. But I, I could be wrong. We'd probably need to call uh, the big Lego store in Times Square and see how they answer the phone and then hang up on them. <laughs> good, good plan. Good plan. Good plan. Um, there's also many resources um, online that actually pronounce things for you when you don't know what to say. Yes, yes, there are. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to jump to the last one, and um, and we'll move on to questions. Ready? Ready to go, yep. Small business comes from big dreams. And at Regions, they understand how to make those dreams come true. Remember, Red? Of course you do. Red is the color of love and so much more. Charles Schwab. So I can retire and stay retired. We decided to remodel our kitchen. You decided. Thanks to the Home Depot and their expert advice, it's turned out great. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Perfect. To escape from the everyday routine, you need to relax. And a good wine can help you with that. My children only speak in letters. LOL. OMG. But the one I hear the most is ATM. The savory taste of roasted almonds covered in milk chocolate all wrapped up in that sweet candy shell. My mornings can't start without my McDonald's coffee and my egg McMuffin. Oh yeah, I'm loving it. The corner office, a house on the beach, and the BMW 745i. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> all right, that's cute. I like the ending on that. And he ended, they ended at exactly one minute. Um, and I like the Elvis has left the building. Let me tell you something about this guy. Okay. This guy has a very marketable sound. Um, I, um, I, I kind of stopped making notes, but I started with the clip number one, too sappy. I don't like that whole, you're going to love. Yeah, I hate that kind of thing on a demo. Again, another personal preference, but I don't like it. I've never put it in any of my demos that I've produced. And again, people, uh, uh, people uh, book with the demos that I produce. So I don't like that. Number two, I thought was a good clip. Number three was Home Depot. That was a good clip. Um, good, uh, now, the McDonald's clip, that very well could have been a national commercial. The, it was right near the end. That McDonald's clip where he did the little dialogue with the female. Um, and the reason that could have been a national commercial, he could have booked that uh, for McDonald's on a national level, and it could have played all over the country. It was that good. And here's why. He was very natural with it, and he has a, a sound that is very popular and has been very popular uh, for the last several years, and uh, they call it in the industry, in the, in the voice specs, we want somebody that sounds urban, urban. And basically, I had to ask my uh, agent when she sent me um, a, uh, uh, an audition once and, and it said in the specs, looking for an urban sound. And I said, what, what is urban? I mean, I know what urban means. Keith Urban? No. I, I, I know what urban means. There's a couple of different definitions. And um, uh, she said, uh, uh, African-American. And I said, well, I'm not. And, and I, don't, I don't sound like I am. And, and, I, and why would you even send this to me? She said, well, I thought maybe you could pull it off. So I didn't do that audition. But that is a very hot sound. One of my, one of my closest friends, Rodney Salisbury, is um, a big-time voice actor. He's the voice of Zatarans. You know, this dinner's kind of dull. Jazz it up with Zatarans. And he's also the voice of Twix. And um, he's African-American. He has that urban sound. Uh, Zurich is another friend of mine that lives here in, in Florida, not far from me. He's the voice of BET. That's a hot sound. And they're using, him for, um, they're using this sound for McDonald's. 
uh, Sprint, Verizon, I believe the voice, uh, not Verizon, yeah, the voice of Verizon, I think, or maybe AT&T, as I think uh, Rudy, I can't think of his last name. But anyway, it's that urban sound. So this guy has, has great sound, and um, the demo was right on track. Uh, I'm looking here at the notes trying to find what was wrong. Oh, yeah, I had my notes here, actually, that I can look at. Um, Oh, one thing I wanted to mention that was also good about this. I think that was the best of, of, of the lot, but I still wouldn't give it anything more than a C+. Plus. Um, but one thing that I did like about it, a demo should not be recorded all in the same fidelity. We don't want you know six or seven or eight clips all sounding like they were recorded on the same microphone in the same room on the same day. Every clip in a demo needs to be produced so that it sounds real. It needs to sound like it was pulled right off the radio. When I produce a demo, I like some of the clips to sound like they were taken off of an AM radio. I like some of them to have the fidelity of FM radio. I like some of them to have maybe the fidelity of, 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 of someone talking on the telephone saying, my husband is so finicky, I can't get him to eat anything. You know, maybe like she's talking to someone on the phone. So you want variety not just in the, in the style, not just stylistically with the clips, but you also want variety in the, uh, in the mix, you know, in the EQ, in the compression. And that's why it's very important not to, as James Earl Jones uh, answered so eloquently, someone that asked him, um, uh, you know, he said, I'm all pumped up. I want to get a demo put together after this seminar this weekend. Uh, how would you recommend that I do it? James Earl Jones looked at him and said, don't try this at home. <laughs> and um, essentially his message was, uh, unless you are a, a seasoned engineer, or audio producer, then you don't know the the architectural architectural makeup of a of a voiceover demo, and you don't have the production skills to make these things. They, I mean, they have to be mixed like real radio and television commercials, and real narratives from the Discovery Channel, and so forth. So um, I thought this one did a pretty good job of that because I heard some of the clips sounded much louder and much closer. Some of them sounded back here, and some of them thinner. Um, but, you know, it, it had its issues. Um, there were some things uh, I, that was the best of, of the lot, but there were still definitely some things there that um, that could have been improved. So let me share why this demo was selected. Um, I completely agree with you. Overall, it's probably the best demo that we had in our collection of bad demos. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily say that it was all that bad. Uh, there were just some things that it felt like uh, if he had had more training, or better training, he would have, I thought pacing was just a, t a bit of an issue going from clip to clip. Um, also felt like, you know, there were issues with inflection that he could have, you know, still sounding natural could have hit maybe a little bit, a little bit more effectively. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the, the only clip that really sounded supernatural and made me say, wow, that was a really good clip was the McDonald's one. Yeah, I agree the other ones, The other ones could have been could have been polished um, w with perhaps more training, um, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't really know what would, or maybe just getting rid of them all together and replacing them with something else that uh, that he was a little more versed in. So yeah, I mean, it could, it could very well be the training. You know, that's why I say don't. I don't like these. I don't like these 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 coaches that ha or these places that have um, set dates on producing a demo. You know, they say, okay, here's the program. You're going to uh, train for five weeks, then we're going to go in and do a demo. You know, I, I, I don't know how you can, I don't really know how you can put a measurement like that, a sweeping measurement like that on, on, on everyone. You know, it's one size fits all. Well, you know, some people are going to have challenges. Some people are going to have natural abilities. Some are not. Um, so, you know, I, I like the idea of, of, of saying, you know, you need training, and then you need to put a demo together. But it's not one right after the other, bop, 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 bop. So that's the way, and that's what I like about Voices for All, is, um, you know, we, we have the training process, but it's not like you have to record your demo, uh, you know, within two weeks after you have finished training. Because, you know, we know it's, it's going to be different for each student. And I don't want to sit through a two-hour demo session and producing a demo with someone if they're not ready. You know, there's, right. there's nothing worse than spending two hours with someone that's struggling to get through a session, and we're having to remind them of technique and so forth. And actually, there is something worse, and that's spending about five hours producing the demo afterwards and, and, and not feeling right about it. So that's what I love about you know, the, the layout of, of what Voices for All does is um, we'll do the demo when, when, when the student is ready and when the instructor is, uh, is ready. So there's no, no time stamp on it. 
Well, again, you've be beautifully segued into my next slide, so thank you for that. Um, you know, we're talking about training, and one of the things that um, Voices for All provides is training. You know, we present ourselves to most people through an introductory course, usually provided at a local community college or, um, you know, park and recreation center, and we share with others um, the industry, you know, an introduction to the voiceover industry. But for those folks who are very much interested in pursuing more voiceover training, that's what we provide. We have three levels for our online master class, bronze, silver, and gold. We also do advanced workshops in audiobook and characters. Um, we have a sort of in-between class between the introductory course and committing to a full-blown master class known as Finding Your Niche. This is an hour-long session where student, a student works with the instructor for, um, again, over video chat technology, just like our master classes are done which is typically Skype, which is why the little emblem is there. And in the Finding Your Niche course, the student has an opportunity to go through a lot of different script reads and really find out what types of scripts work best for them and their abilities. So um, we, we've been offering that class to our students to help them decide if pursuing voiceover training is really something they want to do. And it's uh, been a helpful tool for people really focusing on what their voiceover ambition is. And then, of course, there is the introduction of voiceover class, which is also available in a one-on-one -on -one format. Um, the instructor and the student meet at a mutually agreed upon time and have a Skype session where for 90 minutes, the instructor introduces the student to the voiceover industry. And the nice thing about the one-on-one -on -one session is that, um, you know, there lots of questions can be asked and answered. and um, you know, no one has to feel embarrassed because they think they're asking a stupid question like they might feel in a classroom with a lot of other strangers. Um, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from our one-on-one -on -one introduction of voiceover course. And then, of course, as I'm being reminded now, we also have advanced coaching. Um, for those veteran voiceover actors who are actually out there in the field and working but maybe want to get um, additional coaching, we also provide uh, coaching by the hour as requested. One of the interesting things um, about that, I will say, is that um, voiceover work and voiceover skills are just like athletic skills and that you should always be working with a coach to improve your skill set. Um, I've worked with several coaches. Mike, I'm sure you've worked with others as well. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's not something that you're going to do forever, but uh, going from one coach to another is always a good idea to get different perspectives on how to make the best use of your tool, which is your voice. Um, as a voiceover instructor for Voices for All, is there anything you'd like to add at this point, Mike, in regards to our training? Well, no, I, I mean, I think that pretty pretty much covers at least what's available. Um, I like the, the idea of the Skype sessions, and, and I, I would just like to maybe go back and uh, shine the spotlight on the the whole idea of it's 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 different for each person uh, getting from point A to point B to point C and so forth. Um, it's going to be different for each person. So while the curriculum is laid out and structured, um, uh, basically uh, I don't want to say basically the same, but very similar between these packages, uh, there is more with the obviously you have more sessions and more time with the gold and the silver packages than you do with the bronze but even with the bronze packages um, if if the person after you know nine uh, after you know nine weeks of, of intensive technique work uh, if the person still has struggles it's not like well on the tenth week we're going in to produce the demo ready or not it's not like that so it's e each one of these are, are customized um, to, to meet the needs of, of each person. And some people, you know, need a little more hand-holding and learning technique than others. It's not, it's not a walk in the park. You know, you need to have a little bit of natural ability going into it, I believe. I always tell people, you, you should have a little bit of storyteller in you. And some people say, well, how, how do I know if I have storyteller in me? I guess a good gauge would be if you can sit a small child down in a chair assuming that's where they want to be sitting at that given moment, and read to them one of their little 10 to 15 page books in a way that keeps their attention, you know, in a way that keeps them uh, locked in to the story, then you probably have a little bit 
of, uh, of natural ability or maybe even a lot. But I think going into it, it certainly helps to have a little bit of this natural storyteller um, ability. You tend to grasp on to the whole idea of dynamics. And also I've found uh, people that have um, um, a musical background, people that, that, that sing or people that are fairly proficient on an instrument tend to grasp voiceover technique more quickly than, say, somebody that's been a, an accountant their whole life because they have vocal control. Uh, the the pr ones that are proficient on the instruments, they understand dynamics. You know, they and understand breathing. crescendo, decrescendo. And, and doing a voiceover is very similar to, to uh, singing a song. You know, there's a definite rhythmic pattern that changes throughout uh, and so forth. But it's not something that can't be learned by people that have no kind of creative background at all. I've worked with m many people that have absolutely no creative background at all. Um, one, I'm not going to mention her name. Um, maybe I should, but I'm not going to. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, <laughs> I worked with her, and also Leah worked with her, and um, she was scared to death of technology, very timid with it. I shouldn't say scared to death, but very timid about it. And um, I don't believe she had any kind of a creative background, and she's now just uh, started on, I believe, her sixth audio book. And I'm That's super, fantastic. super proud of her. Um, so you don't have to have a creative background. Uh, it does give you a bit of a leg up, but um, it just um, that goes back around to me saying each one of these are going to be customized around each student. And those that, that need a little more time, uh, they're going to get it. And I'm not beyond or above I should say, uh, doing free sessions. If, if, and I've done that before. I've told people, look, the technique sessions are over, but I think we could, I think we could definitely polish some, some things up here. And we do a little more technique session when we're talking about marketing. And then I may just do two or three uh, sessions just you know, on my own time uh, just to get them ready. Because, again, the last thing I want to do is put them through a demo session where they're a nervous wreck and they're not ready and they know it. And then the uh, last thing I want to put myself through is hours of producing demos and saying, oh, my God, they weren't ready. So I won't do it. I just simply won't do it. And I love it that Voices for All gives me the, the flexibility as well as the other instructors to, to be able to make that, that call. Uh, one of the things I really appreciate about Voices for All is its approach to A to Z, right? Um, all of our master classes come with two professionally produced demos. Um, done in the student's own time, just like you've been talking about. Um, we don't do things a la carte here. So we don't train somebody and then hit them up again and say, okay, well now for your next thing, it's going to be another fee for doing something else. Okay. Um, you know, our master class covers everything. So by yeah, the time – oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say it, it's soup to nuts. And, and I tell um, I tell people uh, on the first session, I say, you know, this isn't just a precursor to something else – uh, that you're going to have to do. I'm going to lay it all out. And when I work with people, I, sh I tell them when we talk about marketing, I tell them how I market myself. And I actually do a share screen for an hour in Skype, and I market myself. I show them. I let them watch me and ask questions of how I market myself uh, online. It's all free, you know, using email. I send them copies of my marketing. Uh, uh, I mean, I send them copies of my marketing email. Uh, and help them construct their own and so forth. Of course, that's part of the that's part of being soup to nuts. Is uh, right. the marketing is helping them, you know, come up with their business name and get everything get everything in position so that when we kick them out of the nest at the end, um, you know, they're ready to hit the ground running. But when I say kick them out of the nest, of course, we've got a stunt bag on the ground beneath them. They fly as long as they can fly, but then if they fall to the ground, they have what, Renee? What does Voices for All offer these people? Lifetime support, and That's we mean right. it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we mean it. And and I'd like, and, you know, and uh, I'd like to just speak to that for just 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 one more minute here. The reason that lifetime support is so important is because, and not to sound selfish, but you know, at Voices for All, we know that our uh, really uh, one of our biggest marketing tools is um, the success of our students. And we've got a lot of it. You know, we, uh, you can go to the, the Voices for All website and go through the testimonials and, and success stories. And the success ratio wouldn't be so high and so impressive if uh, we kicked people out of the nest and we just weren't there for them. Because, you know, when you get out in the trenches and you start doing it, you're going to have questions. And if you leave people to their own devices and figuring these things out, mo many of them will, will, uh, will they'll coil. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll coil. They'll give up. 
and, and, and give up. They'll fall down and they won't be able to get up. Um, so um, having that lifetime support uh, ensures the student that they can relax, knowing that they have the peace of mind of knowing that they, you know, they, they've got a friend. You know, we're always there. <laughs> And um, they're and they're always in good <clears throat> in good hands. And you know we found that typically people that use the lifetime support they use it uh, you know on and off for a period of time, and then and then then they kind of go off on their own. And then we hear you know good stories about them later on uh, that they're out there booking jobs. So they really only need the lifetime support for a short uh, for a short period of time usually. But I always say it, it, the ones that don't ask questions. The ones that, that finish the course and get the demos, and then I never hear a question from them, I have this sinking feeling that they have, for some reason, they've, they've come across something and, and just didn't think to use the lifetime support, and they, and they, they got frustrated or, or you know, something happened, and they just kind of fell by the wayside. Because the lifetime support can be used to put the air back in your sails also. Because it, it, you know, there can be things that are frustrating. Uh, sure. when you're doing it. But the payoff is tenfold whenever you book a voiceover job. That first voiceover job is all you need to keep your uh, tank filled up and keep that desire to get out there and continue to market yourself and send your demo out. Uh, and just when you're about to run out of gas, you book another job. And then you just keep going and going and going. And it's a, it's an, it's a great creative outlet. And uh, I've never heard anyone that's ever done one voiceover and said, ah, that was okay. I don't care if I ever do it again, though. Anybody that's ever done one voiceover has wanted to do more and more and more and more. It's a very fun field. Okay, so you may have noticed that I switched screens on you just to sort of I didn't. That's why off. I shut up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's kind of like, the, that's kind of like the, the Oscars when they start playing the music. So, yeah, I didn't have any music to queue up. Otherwise, I might have done that. Renee just turned her computer completely off on me here. <laughs> <laughs> So, as I mentioned at the start, this is uh, the first of our summer series webinars. We have three more coming up. On July 23rd, Leah Frederick will be doing a webinar on audiobooks. The queen of long form. Exactly. And then two weeks after that, our social media guru, Martha Valenta, will hey, be Martha. discussing social media for voiceover actors and how to use it effectively. And then finally, we'll wrap up our summer series with Ask a Pro. It's a question and answer panel discussion for all of the coaches here at Voices for All. So um, as I, we've been asked this question many times, and I'm sure, you know, 30 minutes into it is probably the wrong time to explain, but all of these webinars are free. They're, they're free. So if you didn't know that, you know that now. Free where webinars. is my $1,000 fee coming from? <clears throat> the goodness of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Checks in the mail, Mike. <laughs> that works. All right, let's get to some questions because we've had some queuing up here. So, uh, Mike, where does one go to get a demo made? Ooh, well, um, back to what James Earl Jones said, don't try this at home. Uh, I'm, you know what, for the first time ever, Renee, I'm going to try to keep the, my answer short. Where do you go to get a voiceover demo done? Um, it's, it's a good idea to either go to a professional studio or with today's technology, even better, if you want to be even more comfortable, uh, get yourself set up to record yourself at home. Um, you know, get the, some professional recording equipment. It's very inexpensive and very powerful these days. And uh, if you're set up just right at home, then you can certainly uh, do That's the way we do the demos with Voices for All. You can sit right in the comfort of your own home and, and uh, record it at home. But you have to make sure you've got a good pilot. Uh, a good captain steering things and and keeping it all on track and directing you while you're while you're doing it. Great. Um, another question that just uh, well actually there's several in the queue here. So um, can I uh, use character voices or impressions in my demo? Well, you can, but I don't recommend doing that. To me, that that's that's another demo. That's a character voice demo. I think in your bio you should mention. Uh, specializing in dialects or Irish brogues, you know, accents. Uh, I'm bilingual. That's like asking um, if if I speak uh, Portuguese, should I put some Portuguese in my uh, in my demo? And the answer to that would be uh, a glaring no. And here here's a quick reason why. So Renee, if you're looking for someone to do a voiceover in English, uh, just standard North American English, and you post an ad out there on one of these, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of websites that are out there, and you say, I'm looking for a male to do a commercial for this, that, and the other, and you know what you have in, you have in mind, kind of what you're looking for, and it has nothing to do with having an Arkansas 
uh, accent or you know sounding like you're from Fargo, North Dakota. And all of a sudden you get a demo that starts off on a good note, but then all of a sudden you hear Cookie Monster, you know, or you hear <laughs> Kermit the Frog or Bugs Bunny. Um, that's valuable real estate being wasted there. You've, you've only really should have 60 seconds to, uh, you know, show Renee what you can do in a different variety of commercial settings. So if her thing has nothing to do with character voices, then you're wasting time. And it could even be a little irritating if you don't, if you're, if you, if you're not dead on with the uh, imitation. So I would say no, don't do that. That's a, that's a, that's a totally different uh, demo. Okay. Um, another question that's come in is, can I combine uh, commercial demos with narration demos into one file? No. <laughs> Next. No. Okay. Don't, do, don't do that. <laughs> that, that that's, that's what we were just talking about. So if someone is uh, looking for someone to do a narration and you send them um, a, a demo that starts off with, and now new Stride X pads work three ways. They're going to be like, what? You know, th this has, and all, all they're wanting is for you to talk about the Alaskan white tiger roaming the countryside in Africa. You know, they want a narrative type read, and and they're having to sit through commercial clips. Why? So I wouldn't do that. Alaskan white tiger. You know, well, <laughs> <laughs> I just throw things off the top of my head. Eighty <laughs> percent of this stuff even makes sense, probably. Um. Okay. Here's another one. Should um. Oh, sorry. What kind of microphone can I use? Uh, well, it should be a studio quality microphone. Uh, I don't like, I don't, uh, you know, some people use USB. I'm using a USB microphone right now, and to be honest with you, I'm hating the way it sounds through the headphones. Um, I don't like USB microphones. You know, you can go out and buy a podcasting kit at Radio Shack for a hundred bucks, and or you can, you know, you can get USB mics at Guitar Center, or just, you know, you can get them anywhere. But I haven't heard a USB mic that I like the sound uh, as it's not as rich and warm as it is when you use a microphone that has an actual microphone preamp or a microphone interface. So um, I would say use a microphone. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. A large diaphragm microphone, that's a good answer. A large diaphragm microphone, for, for sure. Um, professional quality microphone. Not a, not a microphone <coughs> that has um, an on-off switch. If your microphone has an on-off switch, um, put that in the toy box and get yourself a real mic. A real <laughs> microphone will not have an on-off switch, and its power is controlled by the microphone interface. If it's a USB mic, then it could have an on-off switch. And once again, we might want to put that in the toy box. Okay. Good answer. Um, let's see. How do I send my demos to people to get them to listen to them? Don't mail them. <laughs> don't do that. Trust me. I wasted I don't know how much uh, money doing that in the early years. Uh, a lot of it was my mother's money back in the 90s when I was struggling and she was helping me s mail cassettes out. Thank God she helped me with that. Um, but um, uh, email. You email. So you... Um, uh, did, did they say demos? I'm sorry. They, de that's yes. what we're talking about, demos. Yes, okay. how do I, I send out demos to people? How do you send out demos? Okay, well, I, the best way that I can say to do this is to um, not to attach an MP3 to, uh, to an email because you should be creating your own opportunity, as I call it, and you should be cold emailing certain people, production companies and so forth, um, and, um, uh, and businesses. So... Um, people are less likely to download an MP3 from a total stranger than they are to click on a link. So I recommend creating a link. So you have your demos on your computer. You can upload them to any one of uh, many various sites. And uh, once you upload it um, there, uh, it will give you a chance to share it or create a, a URL. And when you click share, it will give you a URL or an address, a web address, and you can just paste that and put that in any email, and all the people have to do is click the blue link, and your demo starts playing automatically. So I would say email a link for a short answer. Okay. Uh, just to give Voices for All another plug, because that's who I love, right? Uh, the, one of the things that we do for our uh, master class students is we provide them with a web page so that we can host oh, yeah. their and demos. Actually, that, that's another way that, that completely escaped my mind. 
um, you can send them to your web page. You know, uh, I like the idea in a marketing email of having a link right there, though. Um, you can put a link there that p goes directly to your demo, or you can put a link there that goes to your web page, which, again, Voices for All does, uh, does create a web page uh, with your demos on there. But I'm all about making it easy for the potential client. So I look at it this way, and I know it's silly. It's not digging a ditch or anything. But if you just give them a link to your website, then it's going to go to your website. Then they're going to have to click again to hear the right. demo. So I like the idea of just embedding a link that goes directly to the demo uh, in the marketing emails. Right. And I'm going to bring up something here because I think it, it's relevant. The link takes up very little space in an email file. Attaching an MP3 is like shoving your record album in somebody's face and saying, sign this for me. It's, it's, um, you don't want to send MP3 files to strangers um, and expect them to listen. You want to ask their permission to listen to your file. Yeah, and you don't have time to, to ask anyone's permission to do anything when you're marketing yourself. You just need to go, 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 go. So, right. yeah, just putting a link in there. Um, people, you know, and you could do, as someone that was wanting to do damage to someone's uh, computer or something, you could probably do just as much damage having someone click on a link that goes to some crazy malware site or something. But people don't tend to think that way. They think, ooh, down, I'm not going to download this thing. I don't, could have a virus in it. Oh, but here's a link. I'll click on that. Right. You know, people, are, people are just more likely to do that. Good point. Um, well, you know, we're getting lots of positive comments saying thanks for the information. Um, and <laughs> that's really, their way of shut. That's their way of shutting me down. <laughs> I guess so. Um, but I don't <laughs> well, seem to have so any much. more. I don't seem to have any more questions. Let me just give the audience a little bit more time to see if there are any more questions to uh, come through. Any final thoughts you want to share with our audience, Mike? Well, you know, if they want to ask questions about 1970s uh, rock and roll, I can talk all day about that. <laughs> oh, really? You know, um, I, yeah, I mean, I could. I could go on and on and on. But I, th I think this was fairly comprehensive. Um, I, I think you, you did a good job putting together the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, caravan of, of bad demos. And, and I like the way that we ended up on that one, which really was a representative of of how um, fixing all, almost all those things that we heard in the, in the initial demos, how fixing all those things could bring you back around to having a halfway decent demo. And again, I don't know who that was, but I'll say hats off to him because if I got a hold of that kid, uh, I have a feeling we could have him uh, voicing McDonald's commercials because that clip, which I could tell wasn't real because of the way it was produced, uh, that clip, the way he voiced it, and, and the, uh, the the inflection that he used, and the, just the way he was relaxed and casual about it, that um, that would book. I believe that would book if he were auditioning for a McDonald's spot. Okay. Well, mostly it looks like there aren't any other questions coming in. I would just like to close um, uh, with this, you know, final reminder to our audience that if they do have any questions or would like more to know more about what we have to offer, they can certainly visit us on the web at voicesforall.com. Um, we're also now online with, uh, as you can see, a beautiful variety of colorful social media channels such as Facebook, Twi Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Pinterest. Um, thank you, Martha Valenta, for doing that for us. Is that um, how you say it? Pinterest? How, how do you say it? Pinterest. Pinter oh, like interest, interest. Interest yeah. with a pen. Oh, so you're, the idea is that you're pinning things. I get it now. I never you know, got that before. Do you know what we're pinning on our Pinterest site? No. Success stories from our master class graduates. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's a good thing to pin. So yeah. Pinterest, Pinterest. Pin that reminds Pinterest. me of an episode of Friends where, you know, the little bar that they, the little cafe that they hang out is called, is called a Central Perk. And in about the fourth season... Uh, they're standing out front, and um, Phoebe is there, Lisa Kudrow's character. And um, somebody said, oh, Central Perk, Central Park. And she's like, oh, my God, I get it now. <laughs> because it was in Central Park. So it took me a while to get it, but now I see the, uh, now I see the, the, the link between the word and what you actually do on that website. So I've got, a, I've got a, a page. I think I created it, and people have been joining me and following me, but I created it, and I don't even know how to get back to it. <laughs> so maybe I need Martha's help with that. I'll be tuning into that webinar. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, thank you so much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it. And yeah, um, 
One final little caveat for our audience, uh, if you would like to take the Introduction to VoiceOvers class one-on-one -on -one, or the Finding Your Niche class, uh, mention that you listen to this webinar and we will offer it to you for half price. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice evening and we hope to see you on July 23rd with Leah uh, talking about audiobooks.